Welcome back to the Pulse with Willie and Al. How's it going today, brother? Hey, buddy, not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, it's pretty pretty nice here in New Hampshire. Uh, we are preparing for a massive heat wave next week. Oh so yeah, pretty excited about that. Well, it has already hit Turkey. Um, we are. <laughs> it's very hot here. I'm I'm sweating bullets right now. So, um, but it's uh it's kind of a cool week. Uh, within the next week too, because uh, someone goes around the earth one more time. Yay! Yay! This guy. So this guy, yeah. Anything before we get going that you want to do differently this year than you did last year? Ah, uh, boy, you know, not really. Uh, I would like to always spend more time with friends if I can. Um, you know, I take enough poops, so I think we're good there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah i think that's it awesome man yeah. well that's uh we wish you the best of luck with those <laughs> going forward in yeah. this next year um but us here we are back speaking of spending time with friends we are back with episode 46 this week uh and and just uh it, it's kind of crazy as we think through like kind of recap on oh, we're closing in on a year of of doing this now uh yeah. really awesome that we've been able to uh pump out some of these episodes so um re really really cool uh but before we dive in guys you know the drill uh smash that subscribe button go ahead and like that video and uh we'll, we'll dive right into major league baseball content because we have some juicy stuff to talk about uh when it comes to baseball uh so let's let's start right at the top right yankees and phillies seem to be the two teams to beat right now uh, with Baltimore, uh, just not that far behind, but it, it really seems yeah. like the Yankees and Phillies are the teams right now. Um, you know, and I'm just looking at the stats, right? Like we've got three Phillies pitchers that have eight wins on the season. Ranger Suarez, obviously leading the league with 10 wins, but, um, you know, you, you look at it now, Nola and Wheeler, like they, they're just, they've got an incredible rotation rounding out the three of them. Um, and, and dude, we're, we're approaching the all-star break. Like we could be looking at three 10 game winners from the same team by the time the all-star break rolls around. Uh, yeah, I, I think, uh, news from yesterday though, with the Phillies, uh, JT real Muto just had knee surgery yeah. uh, out for about a month, which take, so he probably will be back around after the all-star break. Mm -hmm. Uh, but just something to look out for because he very much is the captain of that team. Yeah. Uh, he, he calls a really good game for pitchers. And I think, I, you know, I, I, the Phillies are kind of really ro rolling along, but a big part of that is the pitching. And I think, Real Muto is calling some really good games. So, like, isn't yeah, that, I, isn't that know, kind of a wild game. thing uh, when you think about it? Like, a lot of credit, and I just noticed it and and how I said it, but a lot of credit goes to the pitchers, right? But a lot of times, it's the catcher that sees a lot of stuff and is kind of the quarterback of of the game being able to call a lot from there. And I think that kind of transition that allows them to transition very well into managerial careers. Right. Yeah. You think about it. Some of the best, um, some really good managers, you know, they started out as catchers, mm -hmm. like, because you have to have a really high IQ yeah. to be a good catcher to call a good game. Um, for, for the Phillies. I mean, it's going to be Garrett Stubbs probably taking over the, the bulk of those duties and like, the dude can't hit. Um, <laughs> like if he can call a halfway decent game, I think they'll be fine. But like, just something to look out for. And with the Phillies right now too, like they're they're kind of getting bit by the injury bug. Trey Turner's still on the IL. Brandon Marsh still on the IL. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just something to look out for. But they're I mean, still they got a ten game lead in that division. Ten games over my Braves. Like it's. It's gone. It's gone from bad to ugly very, very quick. Um, it's it's only June now. To be honest, with you, that's I know ten games seems like a lot. Yeah, but that's that's perfectly doable. It like is. If you just pick up one one game a week. 
you can you can get there by the end of the season. You're right. You're right. It's not insurmountable. Um, and we're, we're going to touch on that in a minute. So I don't want to really talk too much on that. But are, are we looking when we look at the, the Yankees and the Phillies right now? Like, are we looking at a potential World Series matchup between those two? Boy, I, you know, I hope not just because I don't want to see the Yankees succeed at anything <laughs> in, in, in life. I don't like I anytime the Yankees do well, like I die a little inside. Um, Uh, Uncle Roger would be pissed to hear you say that. I, you know what? That's, that's fine. Cause uh, shout out for the bad language, but like, fuck the Yankees. Well, little shout out for him. We'll, we'll, we'll soften that blow. Right. Uh, He did start up his YouTube channel. So uh, congrats to him. (laughs) Yeah. I love your uncle Roger. Great dude. But also, fuck the Yankees. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh, man. Nice little <laughs> shout out there. Love you, Uncle Rod. So, all right. Um, but with the Yankees, though, like, right now, they're cruising along pitching. Mm-hmm. Uh, Soto got hurt this weekend. Yeah. Uh, so, like, kind of interesting to see where, that'll, where that turns out. But right now, they're pitching really well. And they don't have Garrett Cole back yet. And Judge is smacking the piss out of balls, too. Um, Aaron Judge, I don't know if you saw Sunday night, the homer he hit. but No, God, I wasn't able to. Damn. Is it still go- like, it's still orbiting? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Like, Jesus. Yeah, all, all I know is I remember looking at the statistics, and he was like, I don't know, at like 15 home runs, something like that. And all of a sudden, he just le- leapfrogged everybody in the pack. And was like, oh, no, 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 okay, actually, I'm the home run king. Like, now I'm going to do it. Because it seemed like maybe he got off to, like, somewhat of a slow start. But he's caught yeah. fire recently, and it just... Um, there's, he, a, there's a world where he has 35 home runs by the All-Star break. He's at yeah. 25 already. Yeah. So him getting the 35 is not out of the realm of possibility. No, no, it's definitely not. Um, you know, I I think, and it's very easy to talk about what makes both of these teams great, right? Like we just mentioned with Philly, they're pitching, uh, and and, you know, they may have some, uh, a little bit of, of trouble with, with the injury bug right now, but we also just talked about the Yankees too. They could have Cole coming back. Obviously Aaron Judge is playing very well right now, but, uh, what are the, are there any glaring weaknesses that we see on these teams? I mean, because injury injury bug is like kind of a weakness, but like, let's talk systemically about some of the glaring weaknesses that either of these teams could have. Honestly, both of them have kind of the same issue to me, um, and and it's it's kind of their bullpen. Mm-hmm. Um, their closer situation, both of them are pretty solid, but boy, the bridge to get to their closer sometimes it's kind of a rocky ride man um so like that's something to look out for because both like you saw this last year you saw this last year with the phillies Mm -hmm. the reason they didn't get back to the world series their bullpen was atrocious kimbrell blew two games in that and that at lcs last year against the d-backs man like you gotta have a solid bullpen and like this year like especially with the Yankees, like Clay Holmes has been just lights out. Like mm-hmm. he's been fire, but to get to Clay Holmes though, like you have Luke Weaver, who's like decent, but after that, like it's an arduous path there, man. Yeah, <laughs> it really is. Well, like I, I've got to ask the question because I don't know, call me old school and you know, uh, young, young old school. Right. But I obviously grew up in the age where these guys were pitching or attempting to pitch complete games. You know, I'm talking about the Randy Johnsons of the world, right? That used to go out there and be able to throw seven plus innings, if not the complete game, uh, and try to get you a win. And, you know, as I look at things now, it feels like it gets, the game is getting overmanaged from a pitching standpoint. Is that something that you think is true or is it just really the analytics just say like, listen, having a fresh arm going out there, throwing 15 pitches at a hundred miles an hour, these guys aren't going to be able to stop it. Like, is that, yeah. is it really that? Yeah. I think that, um, yeah, I, I think it's, hold on. I, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm kind of want to really articulate this. Well, I think that now there's so much information, um, and I think a lot of managers are relying on that information. And I think that like bodes well for the most part. The thing that like worries me a little bit 
Uh, and this isn't like me, like old man yelling at the sky kind of thing, but like you see this, you see this every year with the Dodgers in the playoffs is like Dave Roberts, great regular season manager, Mm -hmm. not taking anything away from that guy, but every once in a while, he just doesn't rely on instinct. And like, that's instinct is something you can't, you can't put a number on. Can't teach that. Yeah, he (laughs) can't. Like, (laughs) Because sometimes, like, even I like watching games sometimes. Like, I'm, I'm no, and no means a manager of baseball. Like, I should start there. But, like, sometimes, like, the obvious is, like, hey, this guy's kind of cooking right now. Like, leave him in there. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, and this happened, uh, this happened not with Dave Roberts, but uh, for Tampa in, in 2020. It was game six, and Glasnow is cruising. And like he gets take he gets lifted like pretty early in the game. Like I think after like five innings or something. And it's like, hey man, like this is an elimination game. Mm. Like let Glasnow roll for as long as possible. He's your ace. Like right. and you just kind of see that a lot in baseball. And it, it is something that like kind of drives me nuts. Like yeah. I know there there there's a lot of advanced metrics that deal with pitch count and health of pitchers and all of this stuff. And but it just seems like I don't know. It, it feels like that kid walking around with a dollar in his pocket and he's like, I'm saving this for a better time. I'm saving this for a better time. And that time never comes. Yeah. Right. It, it's like, well, sometimes you yeah. got to use it. Right. Maybe not at spend all of it, to, but use it. <laughs> yeah. At some point you have to make that decision one way or another. Right. And like yeah, that's, I feel like what happens a lot of times. And, you know, I, I'm curious to see like, again, this year, like it's well, especially with the Dodgers, like, they have a really good team again and they have the pitching this time around Mm -hmm. bullpen little suspect uh but they have such a good lineup like otani and betts are both on pace for 200 hits this year which is insane yeah (laughs) that's just so wild man like yeah it's and 200 hits is hard to do but yeah and you know they have Glass now, and they have Yamamoto, and they have Kershaw, and they finally have a real like a real rotation that you can kind of be proud of. And like, not to mention it, they have other guys that if they catch fire, uh, yeah. in that lineup, uh, oh, in that in that rotation, could it, it could push them over the top? Uh, yeah, yeah, it could be very so, interesting. It, yeah, so it, it'll be interesting to see, but yeah, I, I'm kind of under the belief that, like, I love having all that data in front of you, but, like, I think sometimes you can lean a little too heavily on it, and it mm-hmm. kind of backfires. Well, yeah, and so, speaking of data, uh, kind of leads us into our next point here, right? Like, as we're looking at the divisions right now, the AL East, um, obviously, it's it's pretty tight between the Yankees and, and Baltimore trailing closely behind. I think it's two and a half games. Uh, that it Baltimore's is, yeah. back. Uh, but every other leader in every division, it's five and a half games at least. Like, is this, is it just highly competitive or is it poor play? I mean, as I'm looking at it right now, Al, there's five teams in the National League that are above 500, and there's six teams in the American League that are above 500. Like, yeah. Uh, I think some of those is. <sighs> I think some of those, like, if you look at the AL West, the AL West is actually not, is not good this year. Like, Texas is underperforming. Like, Texas is six and a half out, and they're mm-hmm. 31 and 35 as of today. And we're filming this on a on a Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, you, like, they're just, yeah. And, like, the, like the AL Central. I last week, I think it was uh, I think it was a random like Thursday afternoon. I'm I work from home, mm-hmm. so like I'm afforded certain abilities, and I tuned in. And there happened it was randomly it was it was Guardians Royals, and like I watched that game, and the Royals for all that they do well, boy can they not field right now. <laughs> it, it was just like watching two little league teams like just throw <laughs> the ball around, and you're like. <laughs> Yeah, so it's, I, I think that there is, I, I think there's so much talent in the league, and I think there is some parity, but mm-hmm. also, like, this is just a weird year where, like, hitting's down all, all across the board. It really is. Like, 
I don't know, man. Like, I just, I think that like teams are just, there are a lot of just not good teams this year. And that like, yeah. that sucks. Yeah. Like, you can only, you can only win the games that you, uh, you only, you play the people that you are scheduled to. And if they suck and you beat them, like that's, that's not your fault. Like, no, uh, no, you're, you're right. So, yeah. Um, and I, you know, the, the last question I kind of had, is this what parody kind of looks like? You know, is this, do you think this is what parody is? I don't, I don't want to say, I don't think so because it's baseball kind of ebbs and flows. Like a lot of times it's the same teams that are good mostly every year with a few outliers. And like, and then there's, there's a little bit of fluctuation in that. Like Baltimore is now kind of in the mix of like really good teams. Whereas like, and they kind of took over the Red Sox spot in the AL East where like the Red Sox for a long time, good team. Mm-hmm. while Baltimore is a doormat. So I I don't think there's any more parity than usual. Yeah. I just I think this year like hitting's down all across the league. So like if it just I you know what? I think it baseball's just a little more unpredictable. Like especially like in a like a playoff series like like it, like last year, you take that Diamondbacks Philly series. Mm-hmm. You play that series 10 times, Philly wins at 9 out of 10. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Arizona just like it just caught fire at the right time. At the right time, exactly. Yep. Yep. So. All right. Um, so moving on here, we've got your boy, Lugo, right? Uh (laughs) so he's uh, we had talked about this before, right? Like that um he's continuing his domination and uh, like I I know you're probably liking this, but I want to hear more about what what you're thinking about him. Uh because it seems like he's really starting to to catch fire and and coming into his own this year. Yeah, Seth Lugo, man, like I I think we talked about this last time. He's already matched his career high with wins Mm -hmm. at eight. Like (laughs) Like the guy was on the Mets for a while, which kind of tells you all you need to know. Like, that's nobody's having a good time if you're a pitcher for the Mets. Uh, but like, he's really like he bounced around. I think he played for the Padres for a while. Like, he finally like he found a team where like, first of all, he has a really good catcher in Salvador Perez, mm-hmm. which that dude is hitting everything in his in his fucking orbit right now. Yeah. Uh, but like, he just. I think he's finally in a good system and like a team that appreciates him and like can really like, he can really be the man. And it's nice that he's finally having a career year. Like he's 34. So, you know, he's, you know, I don't know how much time he has left in his career, but it's nice seeing him finally get the accolades and finally be able to put it together. Hey, listen, age is just a number. I'm 38. I'm having a career year. So, you know, lay off the age. thing. So, uh, (laughs) But yeah, re- really nice to be able to see and uh, happy for him Like as he continues to get better and stuff. Hopefully they're able to figure out the fielding and that stuff uh, as they go through. Um, but one guy I- I've got to mention because I-, I told I told him we'd give him a little shout out is uh, Tarek Skubal. So uh, it- it's good to see that there's some nice young talent emerging on the Tigers. But let me just give my perspective on things of how the Tigers have been in the, uh, you know, 30 30- years that i've watched baseball it seems like they do get good prospects but eventually those prospects get milked away from them uh and they end up going to other teams whether they can't afford to to pay them whatever it is is that what we see happening as we're coming close to the trade deadline with a guy like this because he's i mean look at it man he's not only talking about matching career high and wins like he's at eight and one this year he's second in the league in era what he's got 96 K's. Uh his his whip is up there too. Like I say up, but down, right? Like very, very high. Uh second lowest in the league with 0.89. I mean, he's killing it. I'm wrong about being second in the league in ERA, but he's at one one nine two, which is incredible. Um yeah. but I just, you know, is this a guy that we're looking at coming up close here that we're gonna see end up uh you know getting traded to another team like a contender or something like that or is he a guy that we see sticking uh with the tigers going forward i would love to first of all i would love to have your dad on for about an hour where he just talks about all the tigers prospects that got traded and eventually became better players (laughs) (laughs) like if you think about it 2013 2014 they had a starting three rotation of verlander scherzer and porcello yeah 
Yeah, I remember. They all won World Series for other teams. Yep. Yeah, and I and I just feel like every time the Tigers are trying to be serious about like, hey, you know, we're re- I feel like the Tigers have been rebuilding all of my life. There was a there was that stretch where they played in the World Series in 2012. Mm-hmm. They should have won the World Series in 2013, but Boston got hot that year with mm-hmm. the Boston Strong team. Uh, and they had a chance to get in 2014. And that, that three-year stretch where they were just absolutely dominant. And they just couldn't get it done. And I yeah. just feel like since then, they've just been in a perpetual cycle of rebuilding. Like, they had the number one pick a couple of years ago, and they spent it on Torkelson, who, like, fine player. Like, but, like, isn't, I don't think what the Tigers thought he was going to be. Right. Yeah. So... Yeah, I, I think that's just forever the the Tigers. Like, they don't really get free agents. Yeah, which is a tough thing. Like, you know, maybe it's something similar that, like, we talk about, like, the culture change kind of in the NFL, what's going on with the Lions, right? And, like, how you get a good GM, you get a coach that comes in, and they start to change the atmosphere of what, like, the culture of the locker room and all of that. Maybe if that's something that happens there – uh, it's they'd have an opportunity to be able to keep some of those free agents, um, and yeah. I, I I I'm a believer too that like and very very similar to like what happened in Boston, right? With it being you know, and I I can't believe these words are leaving my lips, but uh, being considered title town uh, for a bit. But I feel like that goes just past the sport that they have, right? Like it's not just the Patriots winning. It's also like becomes more attractive for Celtics players to want to be there or Bruins players to want to come to Boston, right? Like, okay, this is a town that can win. So we're going to go there. Right. And it makes it more attractive for that. Now, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe if Detroit goes out and wins the Super Bowl, Detroit, uh, the, the Tigers get no one right. That, that comes in as a free agent, but I feel like you can start to change that, that idea, that, that thought process. He, I, I, it was Scooble too. He is eligible, eligible for arbitration this offseason. Mm-hmm. Uh, which, if he's going to keep pitching like this, the dude's going to get a big raise. Yeah, he is. Um, and Scott Boris is his uh, agent. So, you know what that means. Him like, and about 2,000 other players, right? Like, it's, right? yeah. Right? Um, but, if, uh, if you uh, tell me a guy uh, isn't rep by Scott Boris, I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, who is it then? <laughs> I would uh, love to see the Tigers be good again. Just, mm-hmm. just for your dad's sake. Yeah. Like, your dad deserves, like, a good Tigers team. 1984. Back. Yeah. He brings it yeah. up. So, I, I'll i never forget because of that. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I'd love to see him get another one. You know, we're 40 years past that now. I'd love to be able to see uh, another one get hung up there for him. But um, but I just, I just, with them this year, like, I don't, I don't know what the roadmap is for them to get better. Right. Like, yeah. like with at least like when Baltimore was really bad, you saw the roadmap. Yeah. You saw the prospects that they had in the minors, and you're like, okay, they're gonna be better. Mm-hmm. They've been picking long enough in the top like top three of the draft. They're gonna be better. Mm-hmm. They just have to be, and that that ended up being the case. Whereas with Detroit, like, I just I just don't see the roadmap. Yeah, like. And it's a tough thing. It re- it really is. Um, I was going to ask you: Is there any anything else in in baseball you wanted to cover before moving on here? No, I do want to say though. I did watch. Yeah, I think it was yesterday. Mm-hmm. Uh, Riley Green of the Tigers hit an inside the park grand slam. That's insane. Which is incredible. I mean, technically, it was a triple with a with a throwing error, mm-hmm. but he hit it in such a way that like you thought it was a home run, but it just went over the outfielder's head because respectfully riley green like has some pop but like not crazy yeah uh and he has good he has blazing speed though so got to got to the third guy threw it over through third and then took home yeah that's that was, amazing kind of funny to watch <laughs> uh, uh that's the way baseball is sometimes right yeah. you never know what you're gonna get so um well speaking of never knowing what you're going to get uh well, I wanted to bring this up, and I know it's probably going to be a controversial topic uh, for the podcast, but it needs to be talked about because I, I think uh, it's something that we haven't discussed before, but I wanted, 
uh, as the stories start to, to come in about this topic, I think it's important that we address them. Um, and we, we usually stick to baseball and football, um, but there's an element that needs to be added from the NBA in this. So um, I just think it, it, it needs to be talked about because betting in baseball, um, it's, it's hit hard lately, especially this season with what we have uh, with Otani's uh translator right with with that going on uh but then you also see in the nba right uh john tay porter gets the the lifetime ban uh for this and i know there's a lot of situations in the nfl as well where guys have gotten uh banned or uh and not, not lifetime bans but season-long suspensions you calvin ridley you know was one of them but m- many of these guys that uh they're given an opportunity maybe light at the end of the tunnel to be able to come back but i i just want to say like I think each one is a unique situation. Um, But I'm just kind of curious, like, your opinion on it, like how you feel about betting in sports, if you think the players should be able to do it, and so on and so forth. Um, I don't think they should be able to do it because I think that taints... I think that taints games, and I think that, like, you are... They have insider information that, like, the rest of us just aren't privy to. And I mean... That being said, even though they have that insider information, uh, uh, Tucapita Marsano just got banned for life from yeah. the Padres, and like they was they found out that like the dude placed like seventeen thousand bets or something like that, and fucking lost almost all of them. <laughs> like you just like you, I, <laughs> it's it's so wild oh. how bad. Like the like it's it's funny like it's it's kind of sad too but like it's mostly funny that like these people that have this insider information about sports they're betting on are so bad at it yeah like yep. Otani's translator historically bad yeah very very bad well so and, and I I I think it, it needs to be asked too like is there a difference between betting on sports like these players being allowed to bet. And then being allowed to bet against a game that their team is competing in, because I don't so su- I don't support them being able to bet for or against their team. What I what I I, I uh, what I support for them is them being able to bet just not against their teams, right? But then we get into the okay, well, my boy plays for LSU, and I know this is what their game plan is this week. He told me to throw money on them because of this, right? Like, so it's, you run into, to getting that. It is a very slippery slope. So um, it it just, I don't know. It seems to me as I've seen it kind of grow, because it's been our generation that's kind of seen this get uh, infiltrated into the leagues, right? Uh, It seems like these leagues have an enormous amount to gain from the betting. So I don't ever think it's going to go away. Well, but I, I think the solution, I think the solutions, I, at least in my brain, fairly simple. Like they're getting all this money from like companies like DraftKings and FanDuel. Mm-hmm. Give some of that money to the players, like cut them in on a piece of that, like piece of that pie. Yeah. Like, I just, I don't know for me out. It's like the, the parent that has alcohol at home and the, like a full loaded liquor cabinet and the kid's like, Oh, okay. Like, Oh, but you can't have any of that. And it's like, yeah, but it's right there. And it's like, yeah, but, uh, you know, it, it just, the, the temptation's there. And it, I I know that the NFL does uh, does uh, presentations to try to warn these rookies about when they come in, hey, listen, no betting. They know the rules, all of this stuff. I'm not sure exactly what Major League Baseball does. Not sure what the NBA does, but I know Adam Silver is a, a dog when it comes to that because he's on his guys, right? Like he, yeah. they know the rules. Pretty quickly. Oh, but... yeah, it was, once that came down, and his situation talk about unique he was running from the mafia dude or the the mob right yeah. like it was it, it was, dude was playing in canada like yeah he was he was making bets on shots that he would miss right like yeah. and it was outrageous numbers that like they were winning on those bets so you would have thought that like it would have been something like that that they would have figured it out like hey you know something's going on here but well that's how they that's how they caught porter yeah so like DraftKings and FanDuel like run these reports every day. They're like, and they look for they have people that just specifically are looking for irregularities. Yeah, yeah. And that's what and that's what happened. Like their biggest bet of the day was Porter like 
like hitting like the under on something and they were like hey that's weird but it seemed like this happened a while ago too so it's like when are we finding out about this like you would think that report would go right to the commissioner's office the next day and be like bro you've got something going on here you need to get on this right like it seemed like it took a while to materialize into what it is Uh, i've got to imagine they had to like make sure they had all their ducks in a row because you know with the players they are represented by the players union and like in a very Mm -hmm. strong union who always and rightfully has the players back so like if you're gonna the thing is like if you're gonna come at a player like that like you got to make sure they have you have all your ducks in a row and you have all that evidence so i think that's i think that's what happened i think they like they saw it once and like okay let's monitor this and if this gets out of hand or like something really bad happens yeah we'll we'll go from there and until we have enough evidence let's let's see how this plays out and then the the moment they had enough evidence you saw how quickly they banned him yeah yeah he's because he's gone and they, it's not even a a close like hey maybe we'll reconsider this at a later time like he's done yeah. um it, i i don't know for me it just feels like many of the leagues many of the owners they're getting rich off this and it just like you said, maybe if they could cut them in on it, but like I almost feel like, um, <laughs> I I almost feel like it's a problem they've created, and now they're upset that it, it's an issue, and it's like, well, okay, did you not foresee any of this happening? Like the I don't think it's a problem though, because like if you look at ninety nine percent of the league, they're not doing this. T- like true, true. I I'm like, just saying it's, like it's it's too bad. This is the part that's taking the headlines instead of you know yeah. what what other guys are doing out there because they're doing the, doing right by it you know it just also, i don't know you're going to get people that are going to fall through the cracks i know that's going to happen respectfully there won't be a change until a really big star gets hit like this yeah yeah like otani you would have thought maybe but because it was only o- otani's translator yeah it's fine but the mo- like if that had actually been otani oh my god straight I, you i would bet any amount of money that the like there would have been some swift action to like change the course on this speaking of which with that and because uh, i don't i don't know uh would the dodgers have been able to opt out of that contract that they oh i'm for sure they would have yeah okay because sure it's kind of like, like violating terms and, and conditions right or so, something yeah, similar like, to that um, yeah I, not to... this not to like i i hate this isn't the best comparison but when trevor bauer uh faced the domestic violence issues uh domestic violence stuff he the dodgers were able to get out of his contract because of a morality clause and i and i I would bet any amount of money no pun intended that like (laughs) every player has that in their contract yeah they have to yeah yeah uh, the only one that probably has a different uh, line in their contract, just uh, part B, is uh, if you play uh, too much Call of Duty, we're coming for you. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, gonna, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I'll tell you, uh, that's a funny one to hear. So every time that I play a game like Call of Duty, I think of Kyler Murray and be yeah. like, "Well, <laughs> yeah, good on you, man, good on you." Hey, all right. Well, let's, uh, and we, we can bring that up at later times. Curious what people have to say. They can mention it in the comments, you know, their opinions on it and stuff. Really curious about where people stand on that. Cause it, it is a big issue. It's not going away. Um, and, uh, I know you said it's not a, a huge issue because most of the people follow the rules, but just curious other people's perspectives on that, um, yeah. what they feel about it. But, uh, let's, uh, let's cruise into the NFL, which we have some incredible rumors uh swirling around which we have not talked about this but i feel like this is going to be a like keep your pants on session right um so uh there are rumors swirling of a possible 18 game schedule which i have to admit i was not happy about um but ideally what they would look to do with this is uh push the otas closer to training camp right um and then they're going to push the training camp closer to the start of the season uh way snipping the preseason right um, so, uh, which I love if they would get rid of the preseason games, except that there's many people that are vying for jobs in the preseason. There's many people that the only chance they're going to get to be seen is in the preseason. In fact, 
There's two players I know of, one of which that I've met personally, that competed and needed the preseason to make a, a tr- uh, like a, a squad, right? To make the roster, to ma- end up ending on landing on someone's practice squad. Um, so I don't like the idea of doing that. Um, also, I think the data has shown that like cutting down on preseason and like OTAs and like, training camp like this one it's it's a big reason you see as many injuries as you do Mm -hmm. especially like like think about it every year for like the last like i don't know 10 years like the first month of the season there's a lot of garbage football being yeah there is there is like and honestly like think about it is there any team that you know of that you can honestly say neither uh, none of them played their starters in the first preseason game or the second preseason game maybe they get one one uh you know drive in in the third preseason game and then the fourth one they play maybe the first quarter but that's it a lot of times they're just getting sat yeah and it's like man like you could be you need to play against other people to like get your bodies ready to do that and i know like the injury piece that's going to happen but you're right a lot of times right out of the gates there's teams that are very ready and there's teams that are not and yeah. uh, you know sometimes it doesn't matter like if you're kansas yeah. city didn't matter yeah didn't matter like yeah so. well l- let's talk about the good of this right um and there, there's a, a little bit of upside uh one we get an extra game um bad yeah. for fantasy i think uh because it makes running backs by I mean, committee you shot to lose your title yeah what's that that means you have more, you have more of a shot to lose your title. I yeah, not not only that, but it's more unpredictable. I think um, yeah. the the running Willie back scared. rooms. You heard it here first. Willie is scared. I'm not first. scared. I'm not scared. scared. Give me the crown. I'm not He's scared. scared. I'm not scared. I'm coming for Gerard oh. this year. I'm going to show him what it's like to not only win a championship but then back over someone too. So, uh. um, <laughs> but let's talk about the great part of this. And by Moving to 18 games, it would push not only the end of the season one week later, it would push the playoffs one week later, and it would also push the Super Bowl one week later, which then the Super Bowl would fall on the third Sunday in February. Am I right? Yeah. And the next day would be President's Day. Ideally, ideally, what that would mean is that when you watch the Super Bowl the following Monday, you know, the next day, you would have off from work. Um, yeah, every American, agree. that is. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, every American working in America. Uh, yeah. But um, obviously that doesn't apply to uh, people that are American living outside the country. So uh, I'm going to just have to ask for that instead of Christmas off. So <laughs> Good for you. Good yeah. For you. yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a holiday, man. It's a holiday. Yeah. So, um, but I just, I, I'm curious your thoughts on that because I think that's a, brilliant plan i know it's gonna make the billionaires even more rich but for me i just think that's an amazing amazing thing um even if they decided hey listen we're not going 18 games and we're just gonna push the start of the season one week later that would be awesome too i'd be okay with that honestly all right so quickly quickly for me the downside to 18 games i i first of all I, i'm vehemently opposed to this um, just because, like, just from a player safety standpoint, like, that's that can't be good. No, no, that can't be good. Um, that being said, I think, like, if you want to extend the season, just install a second bye week. Everybody wins there. Mm-hmm. You make yourselves look great. You still get to extend the season. It's a win for everyone. Yeah. You know, like, and you can yeah. stagger it, and I, I think that means less games every week, but, like, you can have maybe better matchups every week. More which... telev- more nationally televised yeah. in-the-spotlight games every week because even with the bye weeks, that means you're going to get to see more teams play. Um, are you, yeah. Are you still going to have the dog shit Thursday night games that we seem to get every week? Yeah. Yes. Yes, you are. But, like... You might have some good, good shit ones, yeah. too, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so yeah, every, every year there's usually like one 
Yeah, there, yeah. there's been a few recently. Like I know Thanksgiving was is awesome, but that that's that that doesn't count as Thursday night football. No, um, I'm talking about like the middle of October, and it's a Thursday night game, and you're like Jaguars, and like yeah, and the, I don't want to watch this, right? Like you know, like, it's going to be a bad one, right? You're like. God damn it, I have nothing else going on. Yes, yep. I'm going to watch this, but I'm going to hate watch this. Yeah, it's it's gonna be bad. <laughs> um Yeah, we'll see, man. Like it it again, I don't I don't know if the NFLPA is gonna sign off on it. I imagine they're gonna want some reassurance that like what are you doing for player safety? What are you doing to ensure that the players are gonna be able to stay on the field? Uh they're going to have to be compensated you know, more too. Yeah, compensated right. more too. Is that something right. that, you know, now we're looking at different deals, right? Because now it's not $50 million a year for the quarterbacks, right? Like some of them are getting paid even more than that. So an extra game check, well, that's going to go up more, right? So, right. Um, you know, what's going to happen with that? What's going to happen with the contracts that already exist to further compensate those players, right? Because yeah. if I'm getting paid $30 million a year, to play 17 games well if you're going to ask me to play another game you're going to pay me for that absolutely so, yeah. rightfully so yeah like for guys that are like putting uh putting their bodies at risk and their long-term health at risk like absolutely it better I'm, be I'm a good yeah there better be a good plan put forward yeah, for it so bag. uh speaking of, guy, of a guy that has had a little bit of injury history but Last year, he was absolutely phenomenal and was uh, just an absolute stud in the NFL. Christian McCaffrey, he gets a nice little uh, restructure on his contract to yeah. ensure that he is still going to be the highest paid running back. And his hope is, hey, listen, and I, I honestly feel like he's doing what no other running back in the NFL is doing. Um, so I'm OK with him getting that kind of money. But uh, he's hoping that it's going to end up kind of going forward and, and helping uh to reset the market for running backs. So I'm hoping that that's going to happen. I don't know if it's going to, but uh, it would be nice for that to be able to happen for him. So uh, kind of curious. This year's uh, Madden cover guy. Yeah. So uh, I don't know if you, you saw on, on Instagram that the meme, the sports meme oh, yeah, site yeah, yeah. with Peyton Hillis. Yeah. And he's like, Hey, how's that guy doing anyways? And uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, Peyton Hillis was the only year it was a fan vote. And, yeah, that's right. And like that was the year the year before Peyton Hillis had like went off and had a thousand yards. Mm -hmm. And everybody in Cleveland was like, Welp, you know what you gotta do. Yeah. Gotta vote for this guy. Yeah. Um McCaffrey, I'm not gonna say he's uh injury free because he's been banged up in the past, but I think uh I think running behind that line, he's got a really good shot to try to stay healthy. And the way he takes care of himself and the way he trains, uh, he does it to give himself the best chance to stay healthy throughout a, a full season. Honestly, all he has to keep doing is running behind Trent Williams. That's all he's got to do. Yeah. <laughs> the, okay. Like, what else do you really need? <laughs> it's literally a Mack truck driving down the football yeah. field. So um, he just like kind of just wait and be like, oh, cool. Trent Williams has run over three guys already. Cool. I'm just going to run that way. Like, so we've got arguably the best left tackle in the game, creating running block, like holes for our running back. And we've got the best running back in the game running behind him. So yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, nope. Very good. good yeah. Yep. Um, also JJ finally gets his deal. Right. Uh, and he's clearly the highest paid wide receiver. Now my, my question for you, cause I already have my thoughts on this. Like, does he deserve it? absolutely yeah absolutely like he to me and this is no disrespect to jamar chase justin jefferson is the best receiver in the league yeah yes like you can try to argue that it's jamar chase or somebody else but i'm you're wrong like yeah. even tyreek yeah, like, is a great receiver but what justin jefferson does um yeah. He's incredible, man. Like even going yeah. back to thinking about some of his catches that he had just this past season, but also you remember what was it two seasons ago, the game against Buffalo? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was just an ungodly catch. Uh, yeah. He's, he's incredible. Uh, and I, I couldn't be happier for him because I know um, what he was doing by holding out too, in a non-selfish way was actually taking care of his former teammate, Jamar, uh, but yeah. also helping out CD Lamb as well. Um, so I'm I'm very very happy for for him, 
he deserves it. I'm glad he stayed because I was trying to think of the proper compensation a team would need to fork over to be able to trade for a guy like that. And it was going to be a lot. So Honestly, I, when I saw the number that he got signed for, it was like the first time where I was like, oh, no, that makes sense. Yep. Like, yeah. I was like, no oh, problem cool. with that. Yeah. yeah. I like read the article. I was like, oh, all right. Finally. Mm-hmm. Like, good for the Vikings. Like, yep. And it's it's really big for for Mensa there because you know as a GM you need to be able to have a history of keeping players like that. Uh, yeah. You know they trade away Daniel Hunter. Uh, they've let other guys go, right? Um, it just you don't want to yep. see that happen, right? Like they didn't sign Cousins in the off season. <sighs> um, I would have very much liked them to be able to keep Cousins and hear me draft out. JJ McCarthy, think- but. Hear me out with Cousins real quick. I, I actually, I, I like, the more that I've thought about it, I'm okay with them not re-signing him. Mm-hmm. Like, the dude's coming off an Achilles injury, and he's kind of old. Like, like maybe he comes back from it, but, like, I don't know, man. History tells tells you that, like, Achilles injuries as a quarterback, super hard to come back from, and you're never the same. Well, we're going to have two to be able to compare side-by-side side this yeah. year and see exactly what, what happens with that. Um, also, shout out to that uh, 2019 LSU team that Joe Burrow had Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase to throw to you. Yeah, no big deal. Season. Good for him. Like, good for the him. more I think about that team a lot, mm-hmm. and like the fact that Joe Burrow threw for like 6,000 yards that season, like makes more and more sense. Like, because you haven't seen that since. Like, but if you had told me that he could have thrown for like 6,500 or 7,000, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't jump at you and be like no he couldn't do that um yeah uh, i mean really i I feel like he was just kind of okay let's you know let's go out there and play but let's not kill everybody right but what he did in the national championship game that he put everyone on notice uh myself included he threw for 5671 yards my bad i had that wrong he only threw for 60 touchdowns and six interceptions you know what um the guillotine will be waiting for you after the show. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. he completed 76% of his passes. Yeah. No big deal. Okay. Um, yeah. Looking forward to seeing him back on the field this yeah. year. Healthy Joe Burrow. Me too. So Me too. Um, I, actually with Burrow. I did see he was talking about it. And from like what I've kind of gathered, like it's been kind of a rough rehab with that wrist. Yeah. He, I, with, I saw that. I read the article like, about his mortality and kind of realizing yeah, that and stuff. Story. Uh, very sobering uh, feel to it when you when you realize that like hey this this stuff does happen like it's not just a a physical injury like it has mental and psychological effects on you too um, yeah going in there so really honestly, I like that he was honest about it like I I wish that more athletes would be honest like that like, yeah 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 um I saw yeah. a little bit of that with Saquon too when I think, what was it? Two years ago, he tore his ACL and you got to see yeah. a little bit of his rehab and him kind of building back up and going through it. And I'll tell you, like I gained a lot of respect. Like it, it's very difficult to, to rehab an injury like that. Um, at oh, least yeah. from an outside perspective looking in, right. I can't imagine going through it. So, all right. I think that wraps up for, for the NFL. We should have some more when we come back next, but uh, let's, uh, let's knock out the trivia and we could say bye. Yeah, let's do it. All right. So the trivia question from last week was, I'm sorry, week before, was uh, Tom Brady has a winning record against every team in the NFL except one. Name that team. And I would not have gotten this right, but I should have known it. I honestly thought it was going to be the Denver Broncos, uh, mm. but it's not. It's the Kansas City Chiefs. Kansas uh, five City and Chiefs. Six career record. Yeah, AFC West. So um, quick question for you. At the end of Tom Brady's career, did he have a winning or losing record against Peyton Manning? Oh, hold on. Let me think about this for a minute. Okay, so. Oh, boy. (laughs) I'm going to say winning record, and I don't feel wonderful about that. Yeah. Do yourself a favor and look it up. And then five hundred bucks. Oh, <laughs> yeah. so, oh, which no, you're right. It doesn't seem that way because he had so much success against him at 
in early in the career, right? Like early in the yeah. rivalry, um, he did very, very well against him. Um, but I think it was 12 and 13. Am I wrong about that? He was 12 and 13 against him. Uh, wait, hold. I think you're wrong. Really? Uh, they played each other 17 times. Brady winning the head to head series 11 out of us. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. Yeah. I don't think that's all of them. How, what, what do you, I don't think that's all of them. We'll all reconvene right. at another time about that, but I'll bring some stats to the table. No, I'll, so I'm looking at Stathead right now, uh, which is run by Football Reference. Ah! Football Reference. Uh, so, 11 and 6. What you're oh thinking goodness. of is uh, Peyton Manning is 3 and 2 against him in the playoffs. Ah, uh, okay. I was thinking of something yeah. else, but is that yeah. figured into that as well? Yep. Hey, yep. 11 and 6 still against him. Mm-hmm. I gotta, I gotta look it up because there was something yep. I read about that that said that he Nine he had a winning record against him. Peyton Manning. Yeah. Oh man, look at that. Yep. Well, sometimes you're wrong, sometimes you're right, sometimes you don't care, and you're going back to your closet. So, yeah, all right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. Hundred dollars uh, in check, please. Yeah, uh, I, you know my address. I'm gonna bounce that. So, good. Um, <laughs> so, what is the new trivia question that we have now that I'm too embarrassed to move forward? <laughs> so uh we talked about it a little bit earlier uh Shohei Otani and Mookie Betts are both on pace for 200 hits this season for mm-hmm. the Dodgers mm-hmm. name the last Dodger to have 200 hits in a season last Dodger to have 200 hits okay yeah all right and we will be back uh not next week um because I'll be on vacation Yay, but buddy. the yeah. following week we can uh we'll talk about that vacation a little bit i'll come with some more incorrect statistics for you and Excellent. uh we'll be able to answer that trivia question so um uh, real quick with a hint for this week's trivia question yeah i will say uh hall of famer hall of famer yeah okay yeah and you can answer that by the comment section below so yeah. uh other than that man absolutely love you and glad to do another one with you yeah, as always, sir. And uh, you have a good rest of your week. Yeah, have a good vacation, my friend. All right, you guys keep it real out there. Take care, bro. Peace. Peace.